Hi everyone, welcome back to EC Coding. Today we are going to discuss about GCP Associate Cloud Engineer Certification question and answers. So last week I have cleared the GCP Associate exam within two days of preparation. That was for my current project. And today I will share with you all the documents I have used to get the certification. And I will explain it in different video parts and let's share the first set of questions right now. And I will also highlight the questions which I was asked in the exam. So without wasting our time, let's get started. Question number one, every employee of your company has a Google account. Your operational team needs to manage a large number of instances on Compute Engine. Each member of this team needs only administrative access to the servers. Your security team wants to ensure that the deployment of credential is operationally efficient and must be able to determine who accessed a given instance. What should you do? The right answer is option C. Ask each member of the team to generate a new SSH key pair and to add the public key to their Google account. Grant the compute.os admin login role to the Google group corresponding to this team. So let's move on to the next question that is question number 2. You need to create a custom VPC with a single subnet. The subnet range must be as large as possible. Which range should you use? So the right answer is option B that is 10.0.0.0 slash 8. So in the next question, question number 3, you want to select and configure a cost effective solution for relational data on Google Cloud platform. You are working with a small set of operational data in one geographic location. You need to support point in time recovery. What should you do? So the right answer is option A, select Cloud SQL, MySQL, verify that the enable binary logging option is selected. Okay, let's move on to next question that is question number 4, you want to configure auto healing for network load balancing for a group of compute engine instances that run in multiple zones using the fewest possible steps. You need to configure recreation of VMs if they are unresponsive after 3 attempts of 10 seconds each. What should you do? So the right answer is option C. Create a managed instance group. Set the auto healing health check to healthy HTTP. So let's move on to next question. Question number 5. You are using multiple configurations for G Cloud. You want to review the configured Kubernetes engine cluster of an inactive configuration using the fewest possible steps. What should you do? So the right answer is option D. Use kubectl config use context and kubectl config view to review the output. Let's move on to next question that is question number 6. Your company uses cloud storage to store application backup files for disaster recovery purposes. You want to follow Google's recommended practices, which storage option should you use? The answer is call line storage. So this is asked in my exam. So let's move on to the next question that is question number 7. Several employees at your company have been creating projects with the cloud platform and paying for it with their personal credit cards, which the company reimburses. The company wants to centralize all these projects under a single new billing account. What should you do? You can make a note of this question. It was asked in my exam. So the right answer is option D. In the Google Cloud Platform Console, create a new billing account and set up a payment method. Let's move on to question number 8. You have an application that looks for its licensing server on the IP 10.0.3.21. You need to deploy the licensing server on Compute Engine. You do not want to change the configuration of the application and want the application to be able to reach the licensing server. What should you do? The right answer is option A. Reserve the IP 10.0.3.21 as a static internal IP address using G Cloud and assign it to the licensing server. So here you can see this in, see it is an internal IP address. So that is the difference with the other options. So let's move on to the next question that is question number 9. You are deploying an application to App Engine. You want the number of instances to scale based on request rate. You need at least 3 unoccupied instances at all times. Which scaling type should you use? So the right answer is option D, automatic scaling with the minimum ideal instances set to 3. So this is also asked in my exam. So let's move on to next question that is question number 10. You have a development project with appropriate IAM roles defined. You are creating a production project and want to have the same IAM roles on the new project. Using the fewest possible steps, what should you do? The right answer is option A, use gcloud IAM roles copy and specify the production project as the destination project. Let's move on to next question, question number 11. You need a dynamic way of provisioning VMs on Compute Engine. The exact specifications will be in dedicated configurations file. You want to follow Google's recommended practices, which method should you use? So the right answer is 
a deployment manager so the next question is question number 12 you have a docker file that you need to deploy on kubernetes engine what should you do so the right answer is option c create a docker image from the docker file and upload it to the container registry create a deployment yaml file to point to that image use kubectl to create a deployment with that file so you have to note this one the upload it to the container registry here it is uploading it to the cloud storage the right answer is uploading it to the container registry so the next question is question number 13 your development team needs a new jenkins server for their project you need to deploy the server using the fewest possible steps what should you do so the right answer is option d use gcp marketplace to launch the jenkins solution let's move on to next question question number 14 you need to update a deployment in deployment manager without any resource downtime in deployment which command should you use so the right answer is g cloud deployment manager deployment update config deployment config path so you can note here it's asked for deployment manager update so update deployment manager so here you can see it's a deployment update so that's the difference so the answer is option b Let's move on to next question. Question number fifteen. You need to run an important query in BigQuery, but expect it to return a lot of records. You want to find out how much it will cost to run the query. You are using on-demand pricing. What should you do? The right answer is option B. Use the command line to run a dry run query to estimate the number of bytes read. Then convert the byte estimate to dollar using the pricing calculator. So this is also important question. So let's move on to next question that is 16 you have a single binary application that you want to run on google cloud platform you decided to automatically scale the application based on underlying infrastructure cpu usage your organizational policies require you to use virtual machines directly you need to ensure that the application scaling is operationally efficient and completed as quickly as possible what should you do so the right answer is option b create an instance template and use the template in a managed instance group with auto scaling configured the next question is question number 17 you are analyzing google cloud platform service cost from three separate projects you want to use this information to create service cost estimates by service type daily and monthly for the next 6 months using standard query syntax what should you do the right answer is option d export your build to a bigquery dataset and then write time window based sql queries for analysis the next question is question number 18 you need to set up a policy so that videos stored in a specific cloud storage regional bucket are moved to cold down after 90 days and then deleted after one year from their creation how should you set up the policy so the answer is b use cloud storage object life cycle management using age conditions with the set storage class and delete actions set this set storage class action to 90 days and then delete action to 365 days let's move on to question number 19 you have a linux vm that must connect to cloud sql you created a service account with appropriate access rights you want to make sure that the vm uses the service account instead of the default computed in service account what should you do the right answer is option a when creating the vm via the web console specify the service account under the identity and the api access section let's move on to next question question number 20 you have one gcp account running in your default region and zone and another account running in a non default region and zone you want to start a new compute engine instance in these two google cloud platform accounts using the command line interface what should you do so the right answer is option a create two configurations using g cloud config configurations create name run g cloud configurations activate name to switch between accounts when running the commands to start the compute engine instances so let's move on to next question question number 21 you significantly changed a complex deployment manager template and want to confirm that the dependencies of all defined resources are properly met before committing it to the project you want the most rapid feedback on your changes what should you do the right answer is option d execute the deployment manager template using the preview option in the same project and observe the state of interdependent resources let's move on to next question that is question number 22 you are building a pipeline to process time series data which google cloud platform services should you put in boxes 1 2 3 and 4 so the right option is option d cloud pubsub cloud dataflow cloud bigtable cloud bigquery 
so you can see the third one is storage and fourth one is analytics so third one will be big table for storage and fourth one will be analytics for big query so you can choose in that way so last one is big query and big table so the answer is option d let's move on to next question that is question number 23 you have a project for your app engine application that serves as a development environment the required testing has succeeded and you want to create a new project to serve as your production environment what should you do so the right answer is option a use gcloud to create the new project and then deploy your application to the new project let's move on to next question that is question number 24 you need to configure IAM access audit logging in BigQuery for external auditors. You want to follow the Google recommended practices, what should you do? So the right answer is option A, add the auditors group to the logging.viewer and BigQuery.dataViewer predefined IAM roles. Let's move on to the next question, that is question number 25. You need to set up permissions for a set of compute engine instances to enable them to write data into a particular cloud storage bucket. You want to follow Google recommended practices, what should you do? So the right answer is option A, create service account with an access scope. Use the access scope https www.googleapis.co slash auth slash devstorage dot right underscore only. So let's move on to next question that is question number 26. You have sensitive data stored in three cloud storage buckets and have enabled data access logging. You want to verify activities for a particular user for these buckets using the fewest possible steps. You need to verify the addition of metadata labels and which files have been viewed from those buckets. What should you do? The right answer is using the GCP console, filter the activity log to view the information. Let's move on to next question, question number 27. You are the project owner of a GCP project and want to delegate control to colleagues to manage buckets and files in cloud storage. You want to follow Google recommended practices, which IAM roles should you grant your colleagues? So that is storage admin. Let's move on to next question, question number 28. You have an object in cloud storage bucket that you want to share with an external company. The object contains sensitive data. You want to access the content to be removed after 4 hours. The external company does not have a Google account to which you can grant specific user based access privileges. You want to use the most secure method that requires the fewest steps. What should you do? The right answer is option A. Create a signed URL with a 4 hour expiration and share the URL with the company. Let's move on to next question that is question number 29. You are creating a Google Kubernetes engine cluster with a cluster autoscaler feature enabled. You need to make sure that each node of the cluster will run a monitoring port that sends container metrics to a third party monitoring solution. What should you do? So the right answer is deploy the monitoring port in a daemon set project. So the right answer is option B. Let's move on to question number 30. Last question in the set 1. You want to send and consume cloud PubSub messages from your App Engine application. The cloud PubSub API is currently disabled. You will use a service account to authenticate your application to the API. You want to make sure your application can use cloud PubSub. What should you do? So the right answer is enable the cloud PubSub API in the API library on the GCP console. So that's all about the set one questions. Let us discuss the remaining questions in the upcoming videos. So thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.